President, I want to thank my colleague from Ohio for his hard work and his commitment to making sure it protects our country. President Biden has shown the American people that he will pander to his anti-Semitic base over supporting Israel. Israel, one of America's greatest allies and the only democracy in the Middle East, the only democracy in the Middle East. One of President Biden's first action was to resurrect the failed Iran deal. And since then, he has greenlit billions of dollars in sanctions relief to Iran, the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism. His pandering can be seen in our cities and on college campuses where radical extremists rally violently in support of Hamas and the extermination of the Jewish people. This cancer has taken over the Democrat Party and caused violence against our Jewish communities. President Biden has made clear with his decisions that the American people cannot trust his administration. I certainly do not, which is why I'm highly concerned that without proper safeguards, the Biden administration will use this aid package as leverage against our great ally, Israel. On October 7th, Israel-backed Hamas terrorists burned people alive in their homes, beheaded babies, raped women and young girls, and murdered parents in front of their children. They brutally murdered 1,200 innocent people in Israel, including Americans. And 200 days since the attacks are still holding eight Americans and more than 100 other innocent people hostage in Gaza. I was in Israel last month, my sixth visit to the Jewish state in my years as Florida's governor and now U.S. Senator, and helped lead the charge in the Senate to support our great ally, Israel. I have voted for the Israel aid in this bill, only to see it fail in the Senate with all Democrats, all Democrats voting against it. For years, I have voted for significant funding for the Iron Dome, David Sling, and other key military assets that help Israel defend itself from Iran-backed terrorism. And my lead in the Stop Taxpayer Funding of Hamas Act, do condition aid to Gaza on the releases of hostages, ensure that we don't send a single dollar, not a single dollar of American taxpayer money to Gaza unless the President certifies that it won't end up in the hands of Hamas terrorists. Pretty simple ask. Unfortunately, the Senate Democrats have blocked this bill from consideration or passage in the Senate three separate times, including when I, was tr when I tried to include it in the Senate passed foreign aid supplemental in February. It should not be difficult to say that we won't risk even one dollar of American taxpayer money going to Hamas and pass common sense legislation to stop that from happening. That shouldn't be hard. This is what makes me so angry and worried about our country. We have a president that is a fool who is stuck in a war that is raging, not overseas, but within the Democrat Party right here in America. Joe Biden has ignited a civil war within the Democrat Party because he is allowing, and in some cases, active encouraging the takeover of his party by Hamas-loving terrorist sympathizers. Frankly, there are still some Democrats that oppose this takeover and continue to stand with Israel. But they are very few, and their voices are being drowned out by the scream of anti-Semitic hate from the radical Hamas lovers in Michigan and New York. We cannot avoid the hard truth here. Joe Biden is destroying U.S. foreign policy in an attempt to pacify Democrats who support terrorism. They have chanted, death to America in Iran for years. But now Democrat activists are chanting it in New York and Michigan. Look at what is happening at Columbia University. How is this happening in the United States of America? But Democrats are letting this happen because Michigan is crucial for Biden to win. He knows he is losing there. So he's bending over backward to support the small minority of people in Michigan who support terrorism. And he's doing it hoping it will help him win re-election. I want to stress this because it shows the American people exactly what is wrong with the platform of my colleagues across the aisle. Every single day we hear Democrats scream about protecting democracy and how democracy is under attack. And while they love to point fingers at Republicans as being responsible for this, the truth is that it's them. Between Israel and Hamas, which do you think is a stronger example of, 
of democracy? Pretty simple answer. Hamas hates everything that Americans support, especially democracy. If you're a woman, if you're gay, if you like equality, democracy, freedom of speech, none of these things is supported by Hamas. None of them. And some of them will get you killed by Hamas. All of them are supported by Israel. But Democrats are so obsessed with winning an election, they've taken the fringe radicals of their party and put them front and center, center stage. Think about that. Democrats are so terrified of the Hamas-loving lunatics in New York City and in Michigan, they're tearing down the only true democracy in the Middle East and propping up a terror organization that have given power again will create one of the most oppressive regimes in the world. Democrats are giving power and voices to people who support terrorism. It's so bad that over the weekend, Jewish students at Columbia University in New York City were told to go home and not return to campus because it's not safe for them. They were told to go home and not return to campus because it's not safe for them. Jewish students at Columbia University in New York City, of all places, are not safe because the campus is being overrun by dangerous pro-Hamas extremists. Is anyone paying attention? Look at what is happening in our country. We have a president of the United States who is leading a Democrat party that is cowering to the radical left of their party in a disgusting and dangerous attempt to get votes from Hamas sympathizers. And his cowering means that all over our country, even in New York City, Jewish Americans aren't safe. <clears throat> no one, not one member of the United States Senate should be okay with what is happening in our country today. I know that terrorists are being glorified at Columbia University right now. But let me remind my Democrat colleagues who Hamas is as we consider a bill that could provide billions of dollars in aid to these monsters. When I was in Israel, I saw the absolute evil of Israel's enemies, Hamas, Hezbollah, all backed by Iran and their brutality. Hamas stormed into Israel on October 7th and murdered Jewish people who were killed for one reason, just for being Jewish. I stood in the places where it happened, where the blood of these innocent Jewish people still stains the floors and the walls of their homes and the streets where they once lived and played. When Hamas stormed in, they raped women, murdered families, and butchered and beheaded babies. You cannot imagine. Hamas burned parents alive in front of their children. They dragged people out of their homes and are now holding them hostage. What happened on October 7th horrified the world and struck me personally. One of the places where I saw the devastations of Hamas terror was Kafar Aza. It wasn't the first time I had visited that small kibbutz. In 2019, my wife Anne and I visited Kafar Aza for the first time. As early reports were coming out, I was really worried about the kibbutz because of its proximity to Gaza. It's about a half a mile away. You can see Gaza right there. It's right there, half a mile away, open fields. And when I heard the news that it was the site of some of the most horrific and barbaric activities, my heart just sank. I wanted to vomit. In 2019, my wife and I had spent an afternoon there, and it was the most peaceful place. I keep thinking about the moms and kids who were playing outside, enjoying the warm summer weather. It is gut-wrenching to think of the fate of the families we met that day. I spoke with Chin, the woman who led our tour of the kibbutz, she was traveling outside of Israel that day and fortunately survived. When I was in Israel a few weeks ago, I talked with Shen and other people who experienced the attack firsthand and thankfully survived. And they told me what happened to them, their families and friends. I, I saw parents setting up memorials at the Nova Music Festival, aside for their children who have been taken hostage or murdered. I stood in a destroyed home and listened to the last words of a young Israeli woman via audio recording as she talked to her father before Hamas gunned her down. I met with the families of American hostages whose devastation and grief is overwhelming. I saw firsthand what Israel faces 
from Iran as proxies and what they would do to us too if they could. They will absolutely do it to us. I placed a poster outside my office that features the faces of the hostages being held by Hamas. I'm not going to take it down until they all come home. I've been clear that we cannot see a ceasefire until every Hamas terrorist is dead. I want every single of them, every single one of them dead. I know I said this before, but I won't stop saying what Hamas did. These monsters beheaded children and babies, raped girls, burned innocent civilians alive, shot people at point blank just because they were Jewish. They dragged innocent people through the streets and are now holding them as hostages in Gaza, which these terrorists absolutely control. It is unimaginable that the United States would ever consider sending money to a place where we know, we absolutely know, that it will be used to help terrorists who are holding American hostages. But that exactly, it is exactly what this bill does today. Mr. President, I want to make sure everyone understands what I am saying here, which is a fact. Every dollar that goes to Gaza directly benefits Hamas. I've spent every day since October 7th telling the stories of those being held hostage in Gaza by Iran-backed Hamas terrorists. And as, as I said, I have a poster outside my office that features the faces of the hostages being held by Hamas. I'm not going to take it down until they're all released. It has been 200 days since the attacks, and some parents are still waiting for their children to come home. Can you imagine a parent waiting for their child to come home? Little baby Kafir Babies. First birthday was spent as a hostage in Gaza. His four-year-old brother, Ariel, he's a beautiful little boy, is still being held hostage. I have a milk carton in my office that has Ariel's picture on it. I see it every day, and it makes me think of my own grandkids. Kafir and Ariel's parents have been waiting for 200 days to hold their babies again. Can you imagine? Sadly, we have heard horrible reports that these innocent children may no longer be alive. Makes you, it, makes you th it just makes you sick to think about it, and you think about your own family. And while Israel is dealing with the recovery from these attacks in its own countries, it is still fighting the terrorists that want to destroy it. It is still fighting with these terrorists that want to destroy every Jew and destroy Israel. So here's the other takeaway from my recent trip to Israel. It means with Prime Minister Netanyahu and Israeli leaders, I saw that while Israel is still dealing with the recovery of its own people, they're also overseeing incredible and unprecedented work to preserve civilian life and get aid into Gaza. War is hell. Tragedies happen, and we wish we could prevent all of them. We wish there could be zero civilian impact of war, but that's simply not possible. When tragic incidents occur, we are right to expect accountability. Israel has shown full accountability for every misstep taken as it fights for its existence against brutal Iran-backed terrorism. Israel is doing more to prevent civilian deaths than any war-fighting nation has been expected to do in history and taking responsibility when tragic incidents happen. But it seems that accountability from Israel is not enough for President Biden. It's not enough for the Democrats. It is insane to me that the same president who has never held anyone accountable for the deaths of 13 American warriors at Abbey Gate in Afghanistan and never held anyone accountable for the deaths of an innocent Afghan family killed in a U.S. drone strike during his botched Afghanistan withdrawal is openly attacking Israel for mistakes that it is taking full responsibility for. When President Biden and Democrats again and again attack Israel and talk about sanctions on the IDF, they do the bidding of Iran and Hamas. Let us all remember who the enemy is. Let us all remember who the enemy is and has always been. The evil, terror-supporting regime in Iran. Since its first days, the Biden administration has emboldened Iran with appeasement, freeing billions and billions and billions of dollars to fuel Iran's support of terrorism and turning its back on Israel. Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East and one of America's strongest allies. But it took President Biden months 
to meet or speak with Prime Minister Netanyahu after he took office, and the world took notice. Since October 7th, President Biden and Democrats in Washington have continued to undermine Israel's fight against Iran-backed Hamas terrorists, further isolating our ally in its greatest time of need. America and the freedom-loving nations of the world are less safe and secure because of President Biden's weakness and appeasement of evil regimes and the terror each support. Now, the Senate wants to again pass legislation that gives billions of dollars to Gaza, which is 100 percent run by Hamas. 100 percent run by Hamas. Now, I'm not opposed to humanitarian aid for the people of war-torn places like Gaza, but I'm not okay with giving aid that is, has even the slightest possibility of going to terrorists that want to destroy Israel and the United States. I'm especially disturbed by the idea of giving aid that could go to terrorists that want to destroy Israel and the United States, who are also holding, they're also at this point, holding American hostages. Can you imagine giving aid to a country that wants to, that anybody that wants to hold American hostages? Why would we do that? How is that a minority opinion in the United States Senate? How has the Democrat Party fallen so far to the radical pro-Hamas lunatics in its base that saying, no, we won't provide humanitarian aid unless we can certify that it won't go to terrorists that are holding American hostages is not an okay position to take. Okay position to even vote on. The eight Americans that are being held hostage by Hamas have been held in captivity, captivity for 200 days. We believe five are still alive and three are dead. And Hamas is holding their bodies and robbing their families of the ability to bury their loved ones. Even when we know they're dead, Hamas holds their bodies. Do we see President Biden or senior members of his administration and Democrats in Washington talking about that every day? Absolutely not. What we do see from Democrats is that they continue to attack Israel, call for the ousting of its democratically elected government. They call for the ousting of its democratically elected government and allow the abandonment of our ally at the United Nations. They abandon our ally, Israel, at the United Nations and on the world stage. And it is disgusting that while they launch these attacks on our ally, Democrats say little or nothing about the fact that American citizens, American citizens, are being held hostage by a brutal terrorist organization that we know is committing horrific sexual abuse against these innocent people. Why has Biden given money to Gazans who are holding American hostages? Why would he do that? Why would we allow Biden to give more money to Gazans who are holding American hostages? When will this stop? Why the heck are we allowing Biden to send more money to Gaza in this bill when we know that every dollar, every dollar that goes, goes to Gaza funds the terrorism of Hamas? What are we doing to get American hostages released? What, are we, what has happened? Have we sent the troops in? Have we done anything? Have you heard anything? Have you watched Biden in the situation room do anything? Absolutely nothing. I want to stop stating this fact. Every dollar that goes into Gaza directly benefits Hamas. That is the undeniable truth, and it's why I've been fighting for years to pass, for years, to pass a simple bill, stop taxpayer funding of Hamas, which simply prevents U.S. taxpayers from going to Gaza unless the Biden administration can certify that not a single cent will go to Hamas. Pretty simple. This isn't a solution in search of a problem. It addresses a very real threat of taxpayer money funding Iran-backed terrorism that seeks to destroy Israel and is holding American hostages. We cannot allow, it's how can it be fair to allow an American family with a family member being held hostage in Gaza to see their tax, buy, tax dollars go to the same people who are holding their family member hostage? We've seen reports that the Palestinian Authority has been paying over $300 million a year in monthly salaries to terrorist prisoners in monthly allowances to families of dead terrorists. The Palestinian Authority, who pays terrorists and their families, should not receive U.S. tax dollars. And this bill is going to allow more of that. In 2021, President Biden's State Department said, quote, 
We're going to be working in partnership with the United Nations and the Palestinian Authority to kind of, kind of channel aid there in a manner that does its best to go to the people of Gaza, end quote. The official went on to say, quote, as we've seen in life, as we all know in life, there are no guarantees, but we're going to do everything that we can to ensure that this assistance reaches the people who need it the most, end quote. The Biden administration thinks the risk of resources going to Hamas terrorists is okay. Because, quote, in life there are no guarantees, unquote. I reject that. I do not believe we should leave anything to chance when it comes to preventing U.S. taxpayer dollars from being sent to the brutal terrorists that slaughtered so many Israelis and Americans and are holding American hostages. Senate Democrats have made clear that they are so terrified of losing the votes of radical Hamas-loving leftists that they cannot even bring themselves to support something that simply makes sure we aren't sending money to the thugs that brutally murdered 1,200 innocent people, including more than 30 Americans on October 7th, and who are still holding American hostages. They won't even let us have a vote on it. It's hard to imagine that this is where we are today, and this bill that is before us does nothing to address this while approving billions in aid for Gaza that we know will go straight to Hamas. Nothing, absolutely nothing in this bill says that money will not go to Hamas because there is nothing in this bill that prevents it. Again, there is nothing in this bill that prevents your taxpayer money from going to Gaza where it will directly benefit Hamas. I've heard about my colleagues on the left talk about needing to support the children of Gaza. No child should suffer, but the children of Gaza suffer every day, not because of Israel, not because of America, but because of Hamas. They suffer every day because Hamas takes aid dollars that comes into Gaza to fund its terror against Israel and the United States. If my Democrat colleagues want to make sure any U.S. tax dollars only go to help the children of Gaza, they would fully support my Stop Taxpayer Funding of Hamas Act. But they won't even let me have a vote on it. It would make certain that no aid goes to Hamas. It, wouldn't, it would not stop all aid from going to the children of Gaza. It would just make sure that that is the only place it goes and not to Hamas terrorists. But again and again, Democrats have blocked the Senate from even voting on this. It makes no sense to me. We should aid our ally Israel now. I've been trying to get that done for months, and Senate Democrats have blocked it five times. While it is extremely important to continue to fund Israel's defense efforts, as I've fought to do for years, I fear that President Biden will use this as leverage he needs to advance his radical anti-Israel foreign policy to appease the anti-Semites in his own party. I was just in Israel and clearly understood the urgency in diverting, delivering aid to Israel. But without safeguards in place to ensure that no money goes to Hamas, or that Biden cannot say, quote, strings attached, this aid doesn't protect Israel from being forced into an unacceptable compromise with the Biden administration while it's at war. What, President, what Prime Minister Netanyahu said is give us time and space to destroy Hamas, and we will. Too often in Washington, compromise means that everyone gets what they want, so nobody has to make a tough choice. The bill before the Senate today is a perfect example of this, broken way of doing business that has become the norm in Washington. If given the opportunity to vote on these issues independently, as the House did, I would vote to support aid for Israel in a heartbeat with strong safeguards, as I have in the Senate multiple times, all of which have been blocked by Democrats prior to this vote. I would vote to ban TikTok unless we see a total divestment from it by entities controlled by Communist China. I would vote to sanction the evil regime in Iran. I would vote to support aid for Taiwan so it could fend off threats of invasion by Communist China. And I would vote for the Repo Act, which allows for the confiscation of Russian assets. And I'm a proud co-sponsor, while opposing the fact that this bill allows President Biden to send billions of dollars of U.S. taxpayer dollars in unaccountable aid to Ukraine. Unaccountable aid to Ukraine, including billions to pay the salaries of Ukrainian politicians. Why are we borrowing our money to pay for the salaries of Ukrainian politicians? It makes no sense for the United States to borrow dollar after dollar after dollar so we can pay the salaries of politicians in Ukraine, while our border, our border is wide open. 
I've had a red line in the debate about the future of any aid to Ukraine. First, it must be lethal only. And second, any action taken by the United States to secure the borders of Ukraine must be tied by forcing. It's the only way it's going to happen. And you have to force the Biden administration to secure the U.S. southern border. In some of his first actions as president, Joe Biden took multiple executive actions to dismantle the border security policies enacted by President Trump, which created the most secure U.S. southern border in recent history. The catastrophic results of Biden's open border policies are being felt by nearly every American family. Since Biden took office, more than 10, 10 million, 10 million illegal aliens, unvetted, have unlawfully crossed our border, and more than 6 million have been released into the United States. We have no idea who these people are. Deadly fentanyl, the precursors of which are supplied by Communist China and manufactured by the savage Mexican drug cartels, are killing more than 70,000 Americans every year. Why don't the Democrats care about this? Terrorists and dangerous criminals are coming across the border in droves. Why don't the Democrats care about this? The FBI director admitted to me under oath that we now have terror cells in the United States because of the open southern border. And we've all seen the horror brought to our communities by violent, illegal aliens murdering innocent Americans like Lincoln Riley. But the Senate, the Senate won't have the chance to vote on each bill which passed the House individually. No, we won't have a chance to do that individually, the way it was done in the House, and we're not going to have a chance to change this bill. It's up or down. If you don't like a provision, tough luck. You don't get an amendment vote. It's a sad day for a body to be shut out of the process like this. While some politicians will claim that the bill before the Senate today is some magic bullet that will restore order and protect democracy across the world, we know that's a lie. Most bills have some good policy. This one is no different. However, and I cannot bring myself to look the other way and vote for policies that will in many ways prolong the suffering that Biden's weaknesses and appeasement have caused for Americans and our friends and allies around the world each and every day. Mr. President, I yield to my, uh, my colleague from uh, Utah. And I, and I retain the balance of my time.